We're ready to introduce the athletes on the start line for the 2016 GIO Ausday 10K. We have representing Japan, Jun Hiramichi. Representing South Korea, Sukman Hong. Representing New Caledonia, Pierre Fairbank. Representing Japan and the defending champion in the open men's category, Kota Hakanui. Representing Australia and racing for his 10th title in the open men's category, Kurt Fernley. From the USA, Joshua George. And from Japan, Sho Watanabe. Australians all let us rejoice, for we are young and free. With golden soil and wealth for toil, our home is girt by sea. Our land abounds in nature's gifts of beauty, rich and rare. In history's page, let every stage advance Australia fair. In joyful strains, then let us sing advance Australia fair. Ladies and gentlemen, Lorenzo. Rossitano, thank you very much. So we're now ready to go to the official start of wave one. One and a half minutes, and a half minutes James, till start time here. I'd like to officially introduce our starter for the race this year, His Excellency General the Honourable David Hurley and Mrs Hurley, and will now be guided by the technical officials for the start of the race. One minute to go. And those just tuning in on Sky News, Kurt Fernley, a nine-time winner of this event, and that was nine times in a row from 2005 to 2013. Missed out the last couple of years, so back with a vengeance. Kota Hokanui, uh, the open men's winner. Last year, he's back to defend his title. So, well, so too, Manuela Shah of Switzerland. And um, we've also got, um, we mentioned James a little earlier, um, some athletes who we haven't seen out here previously, particularly from South Korea, Sukman Hong, amazing on the track, absolutely amazing. Good morning to all our viewers on Sky News. You have just officially tuned in to the Ausday 10K event. We are live here at Circular Quay. It is just about to get underway. Not a drop of rain so far. Uh, Karen McBride here alongside me, uh, Rick Reilly, uh, who's been here, done it before and won the quad event. This is a great event. The starters are ready to go uh, in amongst their Kurt Fernley Paralympic champion. Great Australian, nine-time winner here, ready and raring to go. We are 10, 9, 8 seconds away from the beginning of the Ausday 10K broadcast. Live around Australia and New Zealand here on Sky News, one of the very special events, Karen McBride, on Australia Day today. Absolutely. And we're ready. The gun is in the starter's hand. Of course, that's His Excellency David Hurley. Off and running today in the Ausday 10K, the open men's, open women's, the masters, the quads and the juniors all here today going from Circular Quay around to the rocks. It is one picturesque course to say the least, isn't it, Rick? It's a beautiful course. So hopefully they're not paying too much attention to the scenery as they've got to try to get themselves in the right position. And here we go. It's already leading out and following Kurt. Kurt looked really strong this week at the track meets. I expect something big from him today. Yes, Kurt has taken that up around the first corner there. He is really, really desperate to get this 10th title. So um, last year, um, obviously, Kota had an amazing race. He's back here defending that. And Kurt is determined that he'll go out and he'll put the challenge out and everybody else can chase him by the looks of this start. Um, in a couple of moments, we will have the start of the second wave of athletes. Um, that's the open women, 
junior athletes and quadriplegic athletes. And I will introduce the athletes on the front row from Australia, Jemima Moore. Also from Australia, coming home from the World Championships last year as a multiple world champion, Angela Ballard. Madison Di Rosario, also from Australia. Manuela Shah from Switzerland, defending champion. Christy Dawes from Australia. Elaine Dos Rosa, Santos Rocha from Brazil. Ilana Dupont from Canada. Ten seconds from the start of the second wave. David Hurley, His Ex Excellency, back on the starter's gun, doing a great job so far. And they're away again. I tell you what, Rick, it's got to be tough. This course, they're going as hard as they can, but is there a temptation out there just to have a look out over that harbour, that bridge? There's a few distractions out there. There is, but I mean, if, if you've already decided that you're out of the race, maybe have a little bit of a tour, but I don't think there's too many people here today that are going to be focusing on the harbour bridge. I mean, you're going so fast, trying to work yourself into a position right tight against another athlete. You look up for a second and lose focus, and you're going to get yourself in a bad position. It's pretty nice viewing, isn't it, on uh, television live around Australia and New Zealand as we have a look on looking at some of the leaders there and uh, Kurt under a bit of pressure. Yeah, we look like we've got uh, Kurt's broken away and we're just trying to get focus on the athlete with him. So, Rick, they have decided to, to go and punch this one out a bit. They're not working as a pack just at the moment. Very early into the race for them to be looking at doing that. I think it's a great move. And I can't really tell if that's... I think it is Coda uh, and Kurt that have decided to take a break. The other ones are right there and it looks like they are trying to work to get back up it. But they've got a bit of a good gap. And, it, well, we lost our feed. Uh, so at the moment, it looks like they're going to have a bit of a race with the governor. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, the wind's starting to pick up down here a little bit too at Circular Quay, but uh, still no rain uh, like we have had oh, good morning, all the past couple of years. Our starters down the other end, are you ready? And that's I think a big support from the crowd will be helpful. His Excellency David Hurley okay, there. I put my hand up. When I drop my hand, you're ready to go. He's firing up the youngins for the kiddies race here ready, at Circular Quay. Ready, set, go! <laughs> It is, it is a Japanese quota, I believe the defending champion. And they have put about 50 meters on the rest of the pack. It's game on here, Rick. This is good. And, and there we are, back Ma to the open women's. It looks like Manuela's doing the same thing, trying to make a break. I believe that's Angie right behind her. Manuela Shah, of course, the, uh, the reigning champ. And Manuela was not uh, scared last year to take it out either, so she, she knows she can win this out on her own. It's, it's, you know, it's a tough decision to want to go and race 10 kilometers on your own, but. Um, as long as technically she keeps that in control, well, she could very well come over as the defending champion and win this one for us. But the girls can definitely pick that up and make that gap back up. Hey, Rick, could you give an insight uh, for our viewers at home, perhaps watching this for the first time? This is a Paralympic year, so this event always has so much significance, but maybe even more so in 2016? Absolutely. Mac and I were talking about it earlier that if you can come out here at this time of year, a lot of the countries over in Europe and North America uh, we're indoors, there's snow, we can't train outside, so have an opportunity to come out here with a high-class field, an excellent event, get a few track uh, meets in, and then finish it off with this race is a good start to the season, good training base, and if you're lucky enough to get a couple of qualifiers where all you do for the rest of the season, focus on training, getting ready for Rio. That's where it's all about. August, of course, uh, later this year when the Paralympics uh, get underway. Love an Olympic year. Always had so much to the sporting events uh, leading up to it. And as we can see there, Karen, uh, Manuela Shah, bit, bit of a gap. Yeah, she has got that big gap. And um, James, this is a five kilometre distance, which the athletes will complete twice. And she's heading out the back of the course towards that first turnaround there, where she will come back and uh, do, do her second lap. Uh, she actually holds the course record now at 24 minutes 17. The open men uh, complete the 10 kilometers in just over 20 minutes. So ladies and gentlemen down here at the start line with us, they will, will not be too far away. The boys have made the turn and they're now heading back out to come and visit us again for the second lap. Blink and you miss it. And they're currently uh, leading the way and 
Ricky's got to be in his bonnet after missing out the last two years. He wanted that 10 in a row a couple of years back. Uh, missed out, but uh, today, looking the goods so far, though, he's got some competition on his heels. Well, uh, he, he just made a break coming out of the draft from uh, Coda, and like you said, he is very determined this year, and he is looking fit and fast that we saw the last week and a half at the track meets. I think he's got a good, uh, a good one ahead of him today. The gap in the back looked like it was closing, and it's closing on Coda, but Kurt's just increasing his lead right now. The power of the man. He's ageless. He's ageless, Karen. A number of them are ageless, James. Our Masters category we've been talking about. Um, you know, a number of those gentlemen out there are 40 plus years of age, particularly on the track during the Summer Down Under series. Amazing times and, and you know, so competitive up against the open man. Um, it's just that what we're looking at at the moment is Kurt's determination to take this out. Um, we believe it's Coda that's, that's decided to try and stick with him. But in the distance, and, and I'm with Rick too, sometimes it looked like that gap isn't quite as much as it, it could be. You're seeing a few athletes out there. Now, there's no doubt a few of those guys will be masters as well. Yeah, and you can look at Kurt as such an efficient pusher. The way he moves along with his chair, it's just very smooth. Coda back there, he's grinding it out. He's pounding, bang, bang, bang. Kurt, is, uh, he's got one of the most beautiful strokes on the course. And he is increasing his lead over and over. He is very determined today. 1990, uh, the first time uh, this event, the Ausday 10K was held at Centennial Park. Moved down to the rocks and Circular Quay in 1991 and hasn't moved since. And there's a good reason why as we see Manuela Shah make the turn for home. So 5K's done, five to go uh, for the Open Women's Leader and the reigning champion uh, there as well. It's all part of it. We've seen the summer series. Uh, these guys, Karen, have been building up to this event. Absolutely. The athletes uh, arrived a little over a week ago for what we call the Summer Down Under Series. They've been in Canberra for an international track meet over two evenings, and they've also had an international track meet here in Sydney on Sunday evening. Um, that's critically important element of the series for the athletes because, as we've said, they're looking for qualifiers for Rio. So the 10K isn't a Paralympic event but the track meets are. So many of these athletes have come out during the Summer Down Under series, during our great conditions. Canberra was an exceptionally fast track for them. They've been able to get some qualifiers. They've put that pressure behind them. Um, Rick and I were talking earlier, now they just focus on pre preparing for the Paralympic Games without any pressure on them. There's Kerr Fernley, and that uh, lead, Rick, is getting bigger and bigger for the 38-year-old. It certainly is. It doesn't even look like he's working too hard, and he's probably going 32K an hour. Um, but every stroke, he seems to be putting a bit more and a bit more on the Coda and the rest of the pack. And th we can't even see the rest of the pack in behind Coda yet, so there's a gap there as well. So Kurt uh, was introduced to this race um, when he was a very young boy. Um, he saw it on the TV. His father saw it on the TV and showed Kurt. They came down to the race. From that minute onwards, he has been hooked. And that's something about the Summer Down Under series, which is so important as well. It's not only for our Olympic Paralympic athletes, it's about the junior and developing athletes. Um, it's particularly important for our Australian junior and developing athletes because it gives them the opportunity to compete in their own city and, and country alongside some of the most elite athletes in the world. It's the inspiration that they need to maybe change their life and have a career as a, a professional racer as well. So we've got Kurt now in George Street. He has quite a large gap um, from the rest of the Open Men and Masters pack there. I agree with Rick, he is looking very comfortable. He's taking the turn, ladies and gentlemen, heading down here to come through for the first lap. Please cheer him on. It's Australia's Kurt Fernley leading the Open Man in the Ausday 10K. Bit tricky, these corners. They are very tight in these racers, so they have to slow down quite a bit. But it is a large gap. We haven't even seen the other crew come by yet. That, that, is, that is a sizable lead. And there he goes. He's made the turn. So back through the start-finish line for Curly. <laughs> Got to do it all again. And he be, there, that gives him an opportunity there for See, the first time in the race, Rick, to go, all right, who's behind me and how far off exactly. are Exactly. I think he's feeling pretty good about himself right now. I mean, if he wasn't feeling up to the challenge, I don't think he'd be pushing as hard to maintain that lead. So yep. he knows himself pretty good. He's worked really hard, and he knows this course in and out. He grew up here. <laughs> and there he is. You can see it's... Kota Hokanui, Pierre Fairbank, Show Watanabe. 
So there those uh, trailing uh, behind Kurt Fernley and some of the stiffer competition he's got. Uh, Karen mentioned there, Kota Hokanui uh, in the black chair and the black helmet, a reigning champion, uh, the 41-year-old from Fukuoka in Japan. Uh, he's uh, very keen to try and hunt down uh, that man, Kurt Fernley. He's a three-time Paralympian yeah, too, Kota. But so that's, that's a, a great gap. pack there um, following Kurt. Um, we've also got Josh George from the USA tucked in behind there. So that's probably going to be where we see the battle today, gentlemen. It'll be for second and third place. We do have a master up there um, in Pierre Fairbank. So um, those boys will actually now just battle between themselves for the, the minor placings. We're watching on screen now. Manuela Shah is making her way back up Hickson Road to come into George Street for the open women's category. So she won't be too far away, ladies and gentlemen, for the second lap. Fourth year for Manuela Shah competing in the Ausday 10K, uh, reigning champs, 31 years of age from Switzerland as well. And uh, second place in all four major marathons in 2015, London, New York, Chicago, and Boston. Not a bad record, so comes in in form, at least over a long distance, but she seems to be owning the 10K at the moment. Great backdrop there, such an historic area to the rocks. Looking back, uh, northwest uh, towards the Sydney Harbour Bridge and still no drops of rain. So far, so good. Yes, let's keep our fingers crossed. Manuela, um, a as with Kurt, has absolutely split that pack of women there. Um, she did last year as well and was confident to bring it home. So she's obviously feeling very comfortable on this course these days. Well, we were talking earlier about the ageless time of some of these athletes. Manuela, at 31, spent most of her career as a sprinter on the track. And just recently, over the last two, three years, has moved it into the long distance stuff. And she's performing phenomenal. She Such a great shot, that one, isn't it? As we see uh, Manuela heading straight down into the business zone. Look at that police escort and everything. <laughs> VIPs this lot during the Ausday 10K. Yeah, it looks like both the open men and open women are going to be a fight for second and third. And I, we can't even see the, the, the rain, remaining women at this point in time. Get behind her. She's just taken the turn, coming down the straight for her second lap. Manuela Shah from Switzerland, the defending champion. Thank Ladies and gentlemen, wife. come on, give her a big round of applause. Good crowd turning out here today too at Circular Quay for the Ausday 10K with Mother Nature being kind so far. A little bit of a breeze in Manuela's face as uh, the reigning champ comes down, makes the turn, 5K's done, another five to go for the Swiss superstar, who, as mentioned, a great year in 2015 over the marathons, second in all four of the big ones. You can see how tough it is when they're, they're coming in at a corner about 26, 29K an hour, slow down to about five or 10 and they have to excel again. It's pretty hard on you. I mean, some of those race courses are just sort of a straight out, nice and flat, out and back. This one, you use a lot of excelling and then you hit the hill and a corner, hike it up all the way to the top of the hill and then gain as much speed as you can going down as you go underneath the bridge and do it three twice, sorry. Absolutely, and, and again, Rick, I mean, you know, Manuela and, and Kurt, you know, smart moves. They're out there on their own. They've got no pressure about technically completing the course with all those challenges that you mentioned. I mean, you and I have seen packs of 20 open men on this course who are so tight together and have to take those challenges of the course as well as racing. Um, you know, they are smart athletes when they just go out and they break that because their chances of anything happening are slightly less. It looks pretty comfortable for both, both Kurt and Manuela. When you can just go at your own pace and you know you're fit, you're coming in in the shape that you wanted to be, you don't have to worry, like you said, about what the kind of strategic or any other dynamics with a pack, just race your race. And, you know, whilst I would never want to jinx any of our athletes, you know, hypothetically in, in Kurt's position now, if he blew a tyre, you know, he can pretty much, his gap is that much, he could finish um, as, as long as, you know, there was a, a little bit of air left. So some of those technical elements also have so much greater opportunity to be able to o be overcome. Yeah. Well, let's hope he doesn't because it's a $2,000 set of wheels. <laughs> um, <laughs> There goes his prize money. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Manuela Shah, the Open Women's Leader reigning champ, still very comfortable. Uh, Sizeable gaps for both leaders in the men's and women's uh, categories uh, here today. They are in cruise mode at this stage. 
She'd be hitting about 36 kilometers an hour right there. It doesn't look like it's fast when you're on TV, but she's really cruising. When she can sit up and hang onto her wheels, that means she can't push any faster than the chair's already going. Some great shots, aren't they? Uh, these from just under the Sydney Harbour Bridge, an icon of this city, and of course, uh, Australia Day as well. What about eyewear, Rick? Do you make a, a, a decision depending on the conditions and the day and whether to wear some, some sunny, some goggles? Well, a lot of athletes, regardless of whether it's sunny or not, put something on because if you're in a pack, things are getting spit up. Yep. Guys are taking water, you know, who knows what's going to be there. And the last thing you need when you're going 40 kilometers an hour down a hill is to not be able to see who's in front of you or beside you. If you are just tuning in to Sky News Live coverage for our viewers around Australia and New Zealand, this is the Ausday 10K annual event on Australia Day, dating back to 1990 at Centennial Park. It has since 1991 been Circular Quay and The Rocks, the scene for this. And once again, uh, we're here. Not one drop of rain so far, which has been good news considering what we've been doused with in the last couple of years. Uh, Kurt Fernley leading the men's and Manuela Shah, the reigning champ, leading the women's at the moment. As we see one of the competitors, Karen, make the turn for another 5K. Yes, this will be pleasing for Rick Sizes. This is one of our quadriplegic athletes from Japan, Naoyuki Matsumoto. He's taken the turn and coming through for his second lap. Yep, he's got a couple of competitors in the, in the division this year. It's a bit shy is what, what it have we seen in the past for quad division. Uh, we have one, I believe, one or two quad females out there. They haven't come across yet. Michelle Stillwell being one of them, who I believe has won the last few years of the female quad division. The changes in distance, Rick. You've got you know, some of these competitors have been coming in after doing 1,500 metres, 5,000 metres, uh, jumping up to the 10. We believe Kurt Fernley is not too far away. Yes, there he is. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready. He is coming down George Street and he will not be too far away. That's one heck of a run for Kurt today. Those guys that are that, we're not even in a picture. Those are some top notch athletes that he just put it down. And his time's also very good, Rick. We've just been looking at our clock, haven't we? Yeah, 20. I don't think it's a course record, but it's still a very fast time. And if he flatted right now, I think he'd be pretty happy still. Absolutely. Here he comes. Ladies and gentlemen, get behind him. He's got to cruise down the finish line now for his 10th Ausday 10 Tay title. Australia's very own Kurt Fernley. He will be one happy boy. He would finally get that number 10 out of the way. He, he can equals, retire now. He equals <laughs> the great Louis Sauvage now. So we have two of our greatest on 10 titles here in the Ausday 10K. Official time, I've been told, is 20.35. So he's just outside his course record of 20.23. Rick, that's, that's an awesome push. I mean, he's pushed most of it on his own. And to come just under course record on his own is a great push. Yeah, phenomenal push. Now we've got the fighting four guys fighting for second and third. If you are just tuning in or were watching, uh, we did have some technical issues for those viewers on Sky News and the webcast. Uh, we are back up and running, but the men's winner has been uh, runner one, and Kurt Fernley has done it, got his 10th win. So now we're seeing that fight for second, which Rick really, really was talking about earlier. This is, this is great stuff. Here's the battle, ladies oh. and gentlemen. Oh, I don't even know if I can That's call it, but I think Kota Hokanui from Japan was in second in an Hi. amazing finish there. First master has also just crossed the line, Pierre Fairbank from New Caledonia. And I believe third place was Sho Watanabe from Japan. That's right. So I guess Kota, that expensive chair, Yes, Gave him exactly. that little edge. Exactly. We were talking about the very expensive fully carbon chair. So Coda has got back up there and in the pay packet today. Well, we see one more. Uh, that would be Alex Dupont coming in. Uh, I, uh, the open men. Would he be fifth? We had Joshua George in at third, fourth. 
he looks like he put a bit of a gap to the rest of the field as well. He has, absolutely. And I think that's one of our young Australians just um, coming down behind him, one of our young Australian female athletes. Here comes your fellow countryman, Rick. Alex Dupont from Canada, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome him back. That's a pretty good run for Alex. He's been indoors, as you know, it's quite snowy back home. This is the first time he's been outside since the World Championships in Doha. And uh, so this is, you know, just getting back into training, it's a pretty good run for him. And Rick, um, of interest as well, his wife, Ilana, is also out there in the open women's category, and they have a little child um, back home in Canada. They do, they've got an 18 month old little girl named uh, Amelia. Justine. Big drops of rain falling. We see Manuel is still out there on her own. Just finished coming underneath the bridge in the last stretch. She's looking very strong. Again, it's so nice that you can feel so confident to just go at your own pace, make that break, have the guts to do it because it doesn't always work out. It sure worked out for Manuela and Kurt today. And, and we look at the elite athletes and we talk about, you know, the times of just over 20 minutes now for Kurt and Manuela, probably around the, the 25 or so minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, let's keep in mind that, you know, some of these athletes out there are competing in their first ever Oz Day 10K or their, their junior and developing athletes. We, we've got some now just coming past this um, start finish structure just heading back out for their second lap. Rick, you know, that's a long race for those kids and, and those developing athletes. Absolutely, but I think as a kid, it's just so much fun. I mean, at some point, Kurt's gonna go by you. So you're gonna be able to say, I was side by side with my idol. Yes, and it's so true, and, and that's what we love about this event. It is, they are side by side with their idols and, and their heroes and the people that, you know, as we said earlier, um, can now give them something that they would can focus on and, and maybe look at a new career. Richard Nicholson from Australia, just crossing the finish line now. He's had a great uh, start to the season as well. He had a couple of personal bests at the track meet in Canberra. So he's looking good for the season. And, and again, I think that age thing there, that's another mature gentleman we're talking about as yes, well. Yes, yes, very mature. Manuel is just about to take uh, here she comes. Coming down the finish straight, ladies and gentlemen, the Open Women defending champion, Manuela Shah from Switzerland. Come on, get behind her. Well done. First place, Open Women, Manuela Shah. Right behind them, we had the uh, new French athlete and Richard Coleman from Australia. And Richard's one of the athletes we, we were talking about. He not only is still competing at a, you know, a world and Paralympic level, he's also now coaching um, a, a fantastic up and coming junior athlete. There's still no sight of the rest of the open women field. I didn't realize it was such a large gap that even more to the credit of Manuela. Manuela's official time is 25.46. So that's a little outside the course record today for Manuela. To put it into perspective, I mean, it, it is nice to get the course record, but on the day, look at the gap that she put on and what Kerr put on to his competitors. That's where the real performance came in. Absolutely, and, and you know, it's having that strength so early in the year and particularly for our European um, and, and American athletes, I mean, they've come out of those winters and, and come to Australia. You know, it's great to see someone like Manuela out there so strong at the start of a Paralympic year. I mean, it only means that competition in Rio is gonna be just so huge. Yeah, she really came into it fit. Um, and it does, it's gotta be a lot of confidence going into the rest of her season, knowing that this is how she's starting off. Oh. Rick, Karen, I'm uh, down here trackside for all our viewers on Sky News with the winner of the Open Men's for the 10th time, the great man Kurt Fernley. G'day Kurt, congratulations. Thanks mate, it's been a long time between drinks. So these last few years have been a tough couple of races, but it's, it's good to get number 10.
Well, you've had to deal with the rain too the last couple of years. Uh, I've only felt a drop post-race, so we're pretty lucky with that today. Preferred conditions for you, it's humid, uh, but plenty of cloud cover. Yeah, mate, I'm sure put a drop of water on you, mate, and I just disappear. It's terrible. So I've had a couple of, couple of rough runs, but today, mate, when you get a breakaway, you kind of just then get to race your own race and set your own heart rate, and it was a, it was a good pitch. This event for you, uh, it's got such a rich history. You did go nine times in a row before missing out the last couple of years. Such a fixture of Australia Day, isn't it, which I know is a, a, it's close to your heart. Yeah, mate, Peter Trotter, Jeff Wiseman, legends of our sport, and uh, they created this back... 26 years ago, and it's the reason why I'm here. And we've got legends like Louise Savage, Angie Ballard, Madison D. Rizzo. It's great to equal Louise's 10th uh, win as well. And made Australia Day in the middle of our capital city. There's nothing better. Uh, this is a Paralympic year too for you as well, Kurt. I know you posted some great times in the 1500 and the 5000 of late. How are you feeling leading up to, to Rio? Made the best form I've ever been in in January. So I'm, uh, I'm going to hit now. It's my, my last run into the Paralympics, and now I just get to hopefully ride the most successful Paralympic year as well. Congratulations today, your 10th win, the Ausday 10K. Good on you, Kurt. Thanks, mate. Thank you. The great Kurt Furlick joining us here at Circular Key for our viewers on Sky News. That's it for Bridge. It's back to the Sky News Centre. Greg Thompson with Sports Night here on Australia Day. And, Rick, it's back to you and I now in commentary with... Just waiting for the results of um, the second and third in the open women's category to come through. We're hoping we have a couple of Aussies in there, of course. First junior is Brad Pemberton from Australia. Great to have Manuela Shah. I'd be pretty excited about that one. The women's winner, Manuela Shah, here from Switzerland, back-to-back uh, -back champion. Uh, that was a dominant display out there today. It was a tough one. I didn't expect to go uh, from the beginning so fast and um, to open up a little gap in the first hill. So I thought, well, let's just go for it and try. <laughs> Worked well. No rain. Uh, is that to your advantage? You like that? It was a bit slippery last year. I was a bit uh, worried in the beginning because the clouds didn't look good and uh, I think the weather forecast did, did say rain, so I'm really glad that it stayed dry and um, yeah, we were lucky this time. Hey, tell me, last year you finished second in all these marathons around the world, the, you know, the four big events. What's it like mixing up these distances when you've got 10K here and so much more there? Um, you know, it's still really early in the year, so it's only January. Um, I came straight from roller training, so... Um, a 10k to start with is, uh, I think that's a good thing. And going into April, uh, London Marathon and Boston Marathon, it's a good warm up. Rio, the countdown on? Yeah, Rio is, uh, I know, that's is soon. <laughs> it's very soon. It's coming around very quick. It's January, August, not far away now. You were great out there today. Congratulations, Benuela Shah. Thank you so much. The Open uh, Women's winner here at the Ausday 10k back to back champion. Well done, you. And we've just had the official results come through from the second and third placings in the open women's category. Uh, Madison Di Rosario in second, obviously from Australia, followed by fellow countrymen Angie Ballard and uh, both female athletes coached by the great Louise Savage. Nathan DeWitt, another fellow Canadian that just came off rollers, coming across the line. So, Rick, we'll have a few more athletes um, still out there for some time now. Um, we'll get the feedback and, and results coming through. I think we should take that opportunity again to acknowledge some of the uh, committed sponsors and supporters who um, help put this event on and make it, as you've said personally, one of the greatest road races in the world. The Sydney Harbour Foreshore Authority, QHDC, Superior Mobility Tyres, Sydney Olympic Park Authority, Victoria Food and Beverages, of course, GIO, the Department of Sport and Recreation, and without New South Wales Wheelchair Sports Association, 27 years of the Ausday 10K would not have happened. They have been inspirational in, in leading this event from the very first one in Centennial Park um, to the board and the staff over all those years, they, they truly continue to host one of the event, best events in the world. Absolutely. Every year you're never sure if everything's going to be put in place, but 
wheelchair sports always says it will happen and it always does and let's not forget all the volunteers every time we come over here for this event volunteer after volunteer after volunteer is there making you feel comfortable anything you need helping you out for training whatnot fun just an excellent event every aspect absolutely and our technical officials um you know every year we come down here and you know it's the same faces they've been here for as long as you and i have been here um, you know, this is an internationally sanctioned event. It's run with the, the most elite of technical support to support the most elite athletes as well. So um, big congratulations and a huge thank you to um, all of our technical and our medical support staff as well. Michelle Stilwell from Canada, our open quad female has also finished. few more juniors coming across the line. They're going so fast, it's very difficult for Karen and I to pick out who's who. It's because we're both so old now and we both have glasses on. It's a little harder for us. We'll have to take them off for far away, take them on for close up. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> We'll find out uh, very soon how many athletes we actually have left out on the course. That'll give us an indication um, as to how much longer um, we'll be waiting to see the, the race finish, Rick. But of course, we encourage everybody to stick around with us because we will go straight into official presentations and the, the public here who have been so good and come out and supported the race today will get to see all of their athletes up and close. Absolutely, and then one of the fun parts about the juniors, as you can see, everybody after the race is kind of mingling and chatting, how about this on this spot, and how'd you do here? It's just a, it's a fun, very, the camaraderie with all the racers, regardless of level of ability. The elite down to the junior, the newcomers. It's, it is like a big happy family, and they're made to be felt welcome. And as a junior athlete or first early on, it just makes you want to keep going and do it again. You're going to see how everybody here to this week is going to be back next year. Absolutely. And, you know, it is one of the things that, um, you know, definitely has inspired me for the 27 years I've been involved with the, the event. Um, and, and just seeing, as I said, you know, the Kurt Fernleys, the Angela Ballards, the Christy Dawes's, the Richard Coleman's, all of our athletes who were, were little kids when we first met them, you know, now we get to share in their Paralympic success and their world champion success. But much of that may never have happened if it wasn't for Summer Down Under and the Day 10K. Official results in the Masters. In first place, Pierre Fairbank from France. In second place, Sukman Hong from South Korea. And in third place, Hitoshi Matsununga from Japan. We've got the last athlete coming down the finish line. Come on, along the sidelines, give her a big cheer. She's from Australia. It's Justine Dawson. Get behind her as she finishes her 10K. Rick, the 27th, Ausday 10K. Uh, a pleasure, a delight and very special for me to have had you join me up here today. It's um, brought back great memories. It's been a long time since we've seen you. Thank you for giving your time. I'll give you a paycheck later. Same one I got last time? Yes, absolutely. Gotcha. For me, it's been a great thrill. I love coming here. It's almost like a second home. It really is. With all the friends that I've made, very close friends, this event, again, you cannot say enough about it around the world. It is one of the, this is the event all others are, are, are ranked against. Uh, and the weather held out, which is nice. It's nice for yeah, all of us. Absolutely. Um, and it's always a pleasure, Maka. Thank I you. Please join me as we all congratulate the athletes who competed in the 2016 GIO Ausday 10K. Congratulations, everybody. I'd like to say a big thank you to all of those that have come down here today and, and cheered on the athletes. It's an amazing crowd. Thank you to each and every one of you for making the athletes race such a beautiful day on Australia Day. I'd now like to introduce Catherine, Catherine Look, 
Executive Manager, Portfolio, New South Wales CTP GIO, on behalf of our major sponsor, to join me on stage. Thank you. Good morning. First, on behalf of the GIO, a warm welcome to the athletes, officials, VIP guests, families, supporters, volunteers and members and staff of Wheelchair Sports New South Wales. I would also like to extend my warm welcome to the general public. We are delighted to have you all participate and share in this special event on Australia Day. It's great to see so many of you in high spirits. I was encouraged by the strong determination and great perseverance displayed by the athletes today. Congratulations to all our races. <laughs> GIO is pleased to support Wheelchair Sports New South Wales in hosting this event through our sponsorship for the sixth year. We are proud of this partnership between the two organisations. At GIO, we believe in supporting people with disabilities and we're delighted to be part of the process to lift the profile of disability sports. I would also like to give a huge thank you to Wheelchair Sports New South Wales for organising this event. This is always a great event for showcasing disability sports at its best. And thank you all for participating in this year's GIO Ausday 10K race. I think it's a great way to kick off the Australia Day celebration in Sydney CBD. So have a wonderful Australia Day. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. And truly this event would not be what it is today without GIO. So thank you on behalf of everybody. I'd now like to uh, introduce David Piper, OAM, Chair of Wheelchair Sports New South Wales, the host of this great series, to join me. Thanks, Karen, <coughs> and a happy Australia Day to each and every one of you. Uh, what a great start to the day and what a great weather that we've turned on. We were a bit disappointed last year, so we said we'd just have to try a bit harder and we have today. Uh, to welcome to you all, it's the 26th time that we've done this, I think 25 times down the rocks, uh, down and around the rocks and Circular Quay, uh, and Wheelchair Sports is proud to have sustained the event uh, for this time. Very, very proud. In particular, congratulations to the trailblazers at the event, Peter Trotter and, and life member Jeff Wiseman. Both of these individuals, along with former Premier Nick Greiner, had a vision back in 1990 that made this a reality. Thank you, guys. <laughs> we are absolutely thrilled, and I mean thrilled, to have GIO as our major sponsor for the sixth year running. Not only do they do this, they do the rugby with us, they also do the tennis with us, and they do a fantastic uh, job of trying to showcase wheelchair sports generally. And thank you to the GIO and thank you to their staff that put in such an amazing effort. Thank you. I would re be remiss if I didn't also thank the following uh, support sponsors. New South Wales Department of Sport and Rec, New South Wales Department of Premier and Cabinet, New South Wales Department of Finance uh, and Services, the Australia Day Council of New South Wales, the Sydney Harbour Shore, uh, Foreshore Authority, the Sydney Olympic Park Authority, Blacktown City Council, Invercare, QHDC, Victoria, and Avisio PR. All great sponsors and all great supporters uh, <coughs> of this and other events that we run. Thank you. <laughs> to the athletes, thank you. Uh, oh, sorry, to Athletics New South Wales, thanks for providing the officials. Uh, we do appreciate your ongoing support and expertise, and we thank you sincerely for the uh, officials that were on duty today. They are a key ingredient of a major international sporting event of this nature, and it is a major event. We have uh, athletes from many, many countries. We have observers, uh, our very good friends from Indonesia that I know have come to observe this, and uh, people from all over the world having a look at it, and why wouldn't you be in Sydney? Why wouldn't you be at Circular Quay on Australia Day? We recognise the organising committee for their efforts, 
and in particular the work of Serena Ovens uh, for her expert management of the whole series, both in the Canberra, where we've been, and the Sydney Legs. A special thank you to the head of the commentary team, Karen O'Brien, who has had such a long connection with this event for its 27 years. Thank you, Karen. <clears throat> I'd also like to uh, thank uh, Kathleen Nichols, who's a staff member from Wheelchair Sports, uh, for her tremendous contribution to this series, not only this year, but over many, many years. Thanks very much, Karen. And finally, to the wonderful band of 100 volunteers who gave up their public holiday, or a small part of it, to support the wheelchair athletes, both around here, around this precinct, and out on the course. Thanks, guys and, uh, and ladies. Thank you. Whilst he's left us, uh, we also appreciate the uh, presence of His Excellency, the Governor of New South Wales, David Hurley, in starting today's race. The Governor uh, took great delight in everything that we did. He told us that he was a golfer and we'll be following that up. Uh, it's an extraordinary event that we run here, the GAO Ausday uh, K, and we, an event involving some extraordinary people and there have been many, many wonderful moments over the past 27 years. I'd probably be remiss if I didn't mention this is the 10th year that Kurt Fernley's won it. Uh, I was involved with Kurt um, in another uh, corporate life uh, many, many years ago. He's been an outstanding uh, athlete and he's also been an outstanding ambassador for Australia. And I'm pleased to report that he had a, uh, the Fernley grounds named after him in the Botanical Gardens the other day. Well done, Kurt. Congratulations to all the wheelchair athletes who competed today, not just our winners, uh, they're obviously important, but to all athletes, have a wonderful Australia Day, and I know that you guys go and have uh, a celebration uh, later. Have a safe journey back to your homes throughout the globe, and uh, to the rest present, happy Australia Day. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. And again, congratulations and a huge thank you to Wheelchair Sports New South Wales for hosting this amazing series. Um, I'd like to ask David Jeffries, Marketing Director, Invercare Australia and New Zealand, to join me on stage for the presentation of the junior category. Hi. In first place, Brad Pemberton from Australia. In second place, Julie Charlton, also from Australia. Stay on. And in third place, finishing it off for Australia, three podiums, Greg Luff. Congratulations, first, second and third in our junior category. Well done. And thank you, David, and thank you very much to Invercare for all their support. Terribly sorry, David, you're staying with me. Yes, you are. <laughs> Um, the presentation of the Masters category. In first place from New Caledonia, representing France, Pierre Fairbank. In second place, Pierre, please stay with us. Don't get too excited. In second place, uh, from South Korea, Sukman Hong.
And in third place, Hitoshi Matsunanga from Japan. Congratulations for a second and third in our master's category. And this time it is thank you, David, and Invercare. I'd like to ask Michelle Weiss, Executive Director, Strategic Engagement and Visitor Experience for the Sydney Harbour Foreshore Authority to join me. Hi. First place in the open quadriplegic female is Michelle Stilwell from Canada. <laughs> and first place in the men's open quad category from Japan, Naoki Matsumoto. <laughs> Michelle, did you ask me your time? 32-22. Congratulations to our Open Quad winners. Thank you very much. now like to ask Catherine Look from GAO to join us again on stage for the presentation of the open categories. And in first place, defending her title from last year, Manuela Shah from Switzerland. Second place, Madison Di Rosario from New South Wales, Australia. And in third place, also from New South Wales, Australia, Angela Ballard. Congratulations to our first, second and third open women of the 2016 GIO Ausday 10K. And our last category and um, of course one that this gentleman has been wanting to stand up here on stage for for a very long time. First place, open men, Kurt Fernley from Australia, his 10th title. In second place, Kota Hokanui from Japan.
And in third place, Sho Watanabe from Japan. Ladies and gentlemen, he's not short of a word at the best of times, and um, I'm sure he's going to have a, a lot to say about this victory today, about a Summer Down Under 2016 series. Congratulations, Kurt Fernley. Thank you, Karen. We all, uh, we all got to kind of uh, see Louise get her 10th win here. Oh, uh, geez, it would be eight, eight or nine years ago. And, uh, you know, if somebody would have told me I would have been lining up for my 10th win in a couple more years, I would have, uh, I would have called them a liar, or at least screamed at them liar. Um, I'm incredibly grateful to be here with the guys. Um, I'm incredibly grateful again to see this, the, the, the main streets of Sydney close down, to see wheelchair racing take over. Uh, it's, it's great to see GIO continue to do what they do and support support who we are and, and, and support what we're trying to do here for the 26th year. Uh, it's Jeff Wiseman, Peter Trotter, who, uh, the late uh, Peter Trotter, but Jeff Wiseman is here, who are the, the founding fathers of this race, mate. I'm forever grateful for what you did back in 1990 to start this ball rolling. Uh, all of my family and friends who are out there, mum and dad and, and Sheridan, who's no doubt running after my young fella, Harry, uh, if there is someone squeezing through your legs and there's not an adult attached to him, that, that's, that's mine. Um, and geez, just all the sponsors as well. Uh, I'm grateful to Invercare for your support for me and, uh, and uh, in particular and the race. Uh, the organisation, uh, Kathleen, uh, Serena, what you do to make sure that this race takes place every year. Wheelchair Sports, New South Wales. And look at the young, the young kids that are that are turning up for this race now. We've got a, a, a seven-year-old, Cormac, are you seven? Nine. Nine? Where have the years gone? We've got nine-year-old Cormac. We've got young kids, Nathan from Bundaberg. We've got young kids who are turning up here and they're seeing this thing that hopefully they'll be able to do for, for a very long time. And, uh, and hopefully in 10 years from now, we're seeing the next and the, the better and the bigger Kurt Fernley, Louise Safarge, Jess Wiseman, Madison D. Rosario. Hopefully they're in the crowd right now. But thanks for your help. Thanks for coming, and I'll see you in 2017. Congratulations. First, second, and third, Open Man. Again, on behalf of the athletes, New South Wales Wheelchair Sports, we'd like to acknowledge the enormous commitment and support of GIO to our other event sponsors and dedicated uh, supporters, Invercare, New South Wales Department of Sport and Recreation, S Sydney Harbour Foreshore Authority, <laughs> sorry, I'm having a problem with the wind right here, QHDC, Superior Mobility Tyres, Sydney Olympic Park Authority, and Viteria Food and Beverage. To New South Wales Wheelchair Sports Association, congratulations, another wonderful series. Thank you for taking this on and just leading it for all these years. Uh, to my co-commentators, -com James Brace from Sky News and the wonderful Rick Reilly from Canada. Great to have you back here, mate. It was a wonderful day. Everybody, please enjoy your Australia Day and mingle with our athletes. Thank you.